Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Oz, and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Friday the 5th of September 2025. Heaps to get through in today's weather forecast update nationwide, starting things off with a strong cold front just hours away from impacting the southwest corner of Western Australia, and some more storms expected across Queensland and parts of New South Wales, and a significant winter's blast that's blowing through Tasmania throughout the course of yesterday and this morning. All the details on these weather events, plus a whole lot more coming up in today's weather forecast update. If you are brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. But let's get stuck straight into things this morning over into the southwest of Western Australia. A strong storm front is building offshore from the southwest coast. It's actually crossed the southwest capes a few hours ago, bringing 35 millimetres of rainfall in a pretty quick fashion to Margaret River, with a lot more rainfall still falling in the local area. Uh, it's been a pretty turbulent 24 hours, all things considered, through parts of Western Australia. And this is kind of the cr uh, crescendo to this weather here. In the wake of thunderstorms into the eastern wheat belt, south of Norseman, around Salmon Gums and Esperance, and uh, showers and thunderstorms now expected to be pretty widespread across the southwest corner, the lower west, the south coast, all those sort of regions throughout the remainder of this morning. You can see wind observations now beginning to pick up here, uh, 65 kilometres an hour from an offshore uh, observation out here offshore from about Cervantes and 45 kilometres an hour out of the north at Rottnest Island offshore from Perth. This front is packing a bit of a punch here and you can see really beginning to build in the last couple of hours. The latest radar and satellite frame just has this a few hour, uh, minutes away from impacting Mandra and I imagine by the time this video is out at around 9 or 9.30 this front will be moving through the Perth metro area. Plenty of rainfall to talk about in, in the initial frontal band of this system here. But have a look at this. This is a low pressure system here, the actual core to the front, the powerhouse. And this is now moving in a southwesterly uh, or down towards the southeast uh, direction uh, here. And it's expected to kind of parallel the south coast in the next couple of hours uh, out to about tonight. Uh, later tonight, it's going to get itself situated south of Albany. But have a look. There's another frontal band here and heaps of showers in this vigorous polar air mass sweeping in behind this weather system. And that's expected to keep things cold, showery and miserable across the southwest corner of Western Australia throughout the next 24 hours. 36 hours or so. Let's have a look at the forecast models and uh, say what they're suggesting right now. You can see the Axis Convective forecast model still going hand with some pretty significant and some heavy rainfall associated with this weather system here. It will taper off a little bit before it gets itself into the Perth metro area and we actually expect the front to weaken slightly as it moves into the Perth metro area. The southern suburbs will still cop a decent helping of rainfall from this storm system as it moves through but we're likely to see this storm system reducing power and reducing potency as it moves through the Perth suburbs as especially in the northern suburbs, it's likely to be uh, a system that we could probably label as a fizzer, and that's why there's no severe weather warnings out currently through the lower west for this weather system here. Don't get me wrong, though, there will be plenty of showers on the backside of this system, and rainfall is expected to pick up once again into the early to mid-afternoon hours, and then for the south coastal region, we're expecting heavy showers and frequently uh, heavy showers and storms to move through later to, uh, this afternoon into this evening and then into tonight. Have a look at this. Some heavy rainfall is expected to develop between Augusta across towards Walpole, Denmark, and then over towards Albany later tonight and into tomorrow morning as the low-pressure system then sweeps further towards uh, Albany and Esperance through tomorrow morning into tomorrow afternoon. Conditions are then expected to ease from the west across southwest and western Australia with stormy conditions still expected well into tomorrow afternoon across the south coastal region, but you can see conditions really beginning to pull away from the southwest uh, and the south coast as we get through later tomorrow afternoon. But yeah, talking on the rainfall side of things, there will be plenty of rainfall to talk about from this weather system here. You can see uh, 24 hourly accumulation starting from now out to the end of the forecast run here, which is tomorrow afternoon. You can see some decent rainfall accumulations expected around the south coast. In fact, we could be looking at further uh, rainfall accumulations around 30 to 40 millimetres down here from showers coming through tonight. There will be a wet six hour period across the south coastal region from showers coming out of the south and they will be frequent, they will be heavy and they will pack a punch in terms of rain rainfall and you can see rainfall accumulations there are further 30 to 40 millimeters as previously mentioned we could be talking about total rainfall accumulations from this storm system approaching 60 70 or even 80 millimeters in one or two locations it is going to be a wet weather system for the south coast slightly lighter rainfall accumulations expected further north around the perth metro area the southern suburbs are still looking at between 25 to 35 millimeters of rainfall and some of the hills could get closer to 40 millimeters but for the most part the perth metro area looking at falls between 15 to 25 millimeters probably close to the higher end of that, especially, like I said, into the southern suburbs. But decent rainfall accumulation is still expected to be quite widespread and falls between 10 to 20 millimetres expected through a wide swathe of the wheat belt as well until you get out to about Meriden or Hyden. Uh, between a line for those locations there, it looks like rainfall drops off further towards the east, uh, as you would expect from a weather system like this. But yeah, definitely a system that's packing a bit of a punch here, both in terms of wind and in terms of rainfall. It is a mean-looking weather system. It's small, but it's tight, and it is packing a punch, that's for sure. Heavy rainfall accumulation 
tribulations have been reported, so flash flooding is most certainly a possibility as this weather system crosses the coast into the Perth metro area. Make sure you are ready for that. And if you are commuting or on the roads, drive safe, drive slower, uh, because this uh, weather system here, like I said, the risk of flash flooding most certainly is going to be there. It'll be interesting to see how this weather system pans out because, like I said, it is expected to lose a little bit of steam and run out of a little bit of power as it gets itself closer to the Perth coastline. So whilst it's not expected to be a fizzer type weather system, we're definitely going to see a reduction in the storm severity as it gets itself closer to the uh, southwest corners of Western Australia. Looking a little bit more long range, you can actually see uh, weather is actually expected to clear up on about Sunday. Another weather system expected to move through through Sunday morning, but after that, we're seeing a reduction in the shower activity and the rainfall activity across the southwest corner of WA under the influence of the strong high pressure system. And you can see right through Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and out to about Friday or Saturday next week, there's nothing in the way of rainfall until a weak cold front comes through. There is some weather system activity expected later on into the forecast period, a bit of a stronger weather system expected out until uh, about the 17th or the 18th of September on the forecast modelling, but that's looking very long range, so I'd take that with a heavy pinch of salt at this point in time. But yeah, forecast models are saying that the southwest corner of Western Australia will be a little bit calmer until about the 16th or the 17th of September when we do swing back into a negative southern annular mode, which will bring showers back to the southwest corners of Western Australia. We could be seeing some, a, bit, a, bit, a little bit of heavy rainfall around that time. But what's in store for this weather system here that we're seeing moving into the southwest corner of Western Australia? Well, it's expected to move into the Great Australian Bight and its remnant energy get absorbed by another weather system, uh, which will then develop quite nicely through Sunday and Sunday on the backside of this storm front here. In fact, it's that weather system coming through the southwest corner of WA through Sunday and Monday. And you can see that low pressure system then becomes its own weather system here, dragging in showers and thunderstorms through a wide swathe of central towards central eastern Australia. And this can be the next problem system across southeastern Australia, where we're going to be talking about widespread thunderstorm activity, widespread rainfall, and some snowfall as well to uh, just to throw into the mix here. This is kind of a change of season type weather system here that's moving through the southeast corner of the nation, a complex low pressure system. So let's, let me break this down for you in some great detail right now. Now, Monday night is going to be an interesting night because we are expecting thunderstorm activity with some very warm temperatures and some humid conditions and plenty of moisture expected to move through parts of the Northern Territory, Queensland and New South Wales. Monday night will be a severe thunderstorm chance north of Alice Springs in the Northern Territory. There'll also be a chance of some isolated severe thunderstorms into the northeastern corner of South Australia and the southwestern corners of Queensland. Also for the northeastern, uh, northwestern corner of New South Wales, there will be some widespread severe thunderstorm chances, especially north of Broken Hill and Coba and then towards the uh, west of Lightning Ridge and Berowina, we could be talking about some thunderstorm chances. And then that uh, really does exacerbate through Monday night and into Tuesday morning. We're going to be waking up to some widespread rainfall developing across this part of New South Wales into the channel country of Queensland and into the northeastern corner of uh, South Australia. Now, the rainfall is not expected to be heavy, but we're expecting some steady, moderate rainfall accumulations to develop as a result of this weather system here. A big band of moisture expected to be pulled down through this part of Queensland into New South Wales and then into a developing low pressure system through Tuesday and Wednesday, which will then be pushed out into the Tasman Sea. I'll get to the low pressure system aspect of this in just a second. I just want to finish off the thunderstorm and the rainfall aspect for interior parts of Queensland, New South Wales, South Australia, and the Northern Territory. This will be a four state weather system. And you can see rainfall accumulations over the four days between the 7th of September out to the 10th of September inclusive. Widespread accumulations through New South Wales between 10 to 50 millimeters are expected. Heavier accumulations expected the further towards the agricultural communities of Dubbo, Orange, and then down towards the southeastern corner uh, of New South Wales you get, we could be talking about falls there between 40 to 80 millimetres or pushing closer to that 40 to 80 millimetre mark. Uh, and you can actually see a few spots on the forecast modelling now up around the 125 millimetre mark into the Snowy Mountains. So some good rainfall is expected down there. Widespread rainfall accumulations through interior parts of New South Wales. I mean, you can see it here, green over 25 millimetres of rainfall, uh, yellow over 50 millimetres of rainfall, some great totals expected through interior parts of New South Wales. Too many places to mention in this forecast update that are looking at some decent rainfall accumulations. And even into the channel country of Queensland, some widespread falls between five to 25 millimeters are possible. And under the right thunderstorms, especially through Monday night, those rainfall accumulations could be doubled or even tripled. So we will keep a close eye on things, but yeah, plenty of moisture streaming into this part of Australia. And it looks like we're gonna have our first really good chance of thunderstorms on Monday night uh, into this part of Australia. And have a look at the convective available potential energy values as well, pushing above a thousand joules per kilogram of available air for these thunderstorms to use. That is heaps of energy for this time of the year. The biggest values that I've seen since April or May uh, of this year on the forecast modeling. So we are expecting some crack of thunderstorms in this part of Queensland, New South Wales, South Australia, and the Northern Territory, especially for this time of the year. 
And again, uh, need I say much more, the temperatures are going to be there as well. Have a look at this. With that low pressure system that's developing, temperatures are going to approach 38 degrees through a few locations here. Bedori looking at 37, Birdsville looking at 36. This is what I'd class as the first really warm day through this part of Australia uh, for this season. And yeah, plenty of rainfall, plenty of thunderstorms expected. It just really is going to be a great setup for some of these thunderstorms here, so get excited. Anyways, over towards this low pressure system part of the forecast, you can see moving into New South Wales through Tuesday and Wednesday, really developing across the southeastern corner of New South Wales, as you would expect for a spring rainmaker like this. Tuesday's going to be a bit of a washout through the agricultural parts of New South Wales. That's when we're expecting the bulk of the rainfall. Even into the southeastern corner of Victoria through the Gippsland region and the uh, Victorian high country, we're expecting good rainfall through Tuesday night, continuing into Wednesday morning, tending to snowfall actually through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, and blizzard conditions are a possibility through the high country of New New South Wales and uh, Victoria through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. This low will then emerge into the Tasman Sea through Wednesday morning and will rapidly intensify. You can see undergoing a uh, very quick bout of, uh, of intensification through Wednesday morning into Wednesday afternoon, becoming a powerful low pressure system through Wednesday night and into Thursday morning, and then racing down towards New Zealand where it's likely to cause all sorts of rainfall and wind speed problems. I mean, have a look at this. Wind gusts from this low pressure system on Thursday expected to approach 140 kilometers an hour offshore from New Zealand. So this system will really be a problematic one, that's for sure. But on the back side of the system here through Tuesday and Wednesday, it's also expected to be very strong, rough conditions expected offshore from New South Wales late Tuesday night, and that will continue through Wednesday morning. And have a look at as this low pressure system develops, wind gusts offshore from New South Wales approach 160 kilometers an hour. So this will be a true East Coast low type weather system here. Very significant, very strong low pressure system expected, and it's going to make the most of some very warm sea temperatures offshore from New South Wales, where it will be able to undergo that very quick intensification Major forecast models all very much congruent on this as well. We're definitely expecting a large scale and a very powerful low pressure system to develop offshore from New South Wales into the northern parts of the Tasman Sea, just through this part of uh, the uh, East Australian current here, uh, offshore somewhere between Naruma and Oladola, right down to about the Gippsland coastline of Victoria. A large and powerful low pressure system expected to very quickly develop through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. But because it's going to be moving offshore, it's actually not expected to be too much of a problematic system for New South Wales or Victoria. Victoria. Yes, there will be some showers around and these showers will be associated with some very strong wind gusts uh, at times. And you can see wind gusts on major forecast models tip to exceed 100 kilometers an hour around coastal locations. So severe weather warning is very likely to be raised. And Tuesday night into Wednesday morning and into early Wednesday afternoon, certainly going to be a time to watch very closely on the weather forecast models with some strong winds expected as this low pressure system really ramps up. But you can see a very, very powerful weather system expected to develop out of this. But the reason that we're not overly concerned for mainland Australia Australia is because it's going to very quickly get itself offshore and it's not expected to be a prolonged uh, significant storm system or a significant storm impact for this part of Australia, even though it is going to be really strong and in really close proximity to the Australian mainland. I'll have more updates on this weather system throughout the course of today over on the Facebook page, but certainly a weather system worth watching at this point in time, but for Eastern Australia, definitely not one to be w w uh, that's worth uh, panicking or worrying about too much at this point in time. It will be strong, but it's not expected to be a prolonged low pressure system, and it's also not expected to be too large or large enough to cause all sorts of widespread problems, and whilst it most certainly will be one of the strongest storms of the year offshore from New South Wales, and it's likely to be an absolute whopper uh, at this point in time, Tuesday and Wednesday, whilst it will be rough, it's not expected to be the most severe weather that we've seen so far this year. And just briefly, I know that time is of the essence right now up in towards North Queensland. Rainfall beginning to develop from today across the uh, Casper Coast and into the Daintree Rainforest. And you can see four-day rainfall accumulations out to Monday night, uh, looking pretty healthy, especially for this time of the year through parts of the Casper Coast. And keep in mind, far North Queensland can really quickly exceed these rainfall accumulations we're seeing on the forecast modeling here. So whilst 50 millimeters is on the forecast around Berlin and Kern Innisfail, that could rapidly climb above 100 millimeters of rainfall in this time period. And you can already start to see a few showers beginning to develop and this uh, cloud activity now beginning to become a little bit more prevalent offshore from the North Queensland coastline with a few strong wind gusts now being reported. You can see down here on Gannett, K, uh, Gannett Key, rather, 50 kilometres an hour out of the south. Winds really starting to pick up there and showers and cloud activity also expected to begin to pick up in the next couple of hours. And as we just quickly play this through, you can see showers expected to be widespread through North Queensland with a few thunderstorms also expected inland over the hills and the Atherton, or over the Atherton Tablelands. We're expecting these thunderstorms to be 
well inland from the Atherton Timberlands later tonight, and maybe one or two severe thunderstorms possible south of Mount Carbine and south of Palmerville into North Queensland. You can also see as we push this forecast modelling forward, showers become a little bit more widespread through Sunday afternoon into Sunday morning before they abruptly ease off through Sunday night into early Monday morning. A few showers still expected here and there through the wet Sundays through Monday and Tuesday, and you can see showers then pull away from North Queensland for a couple of days until out to about the 13th or the 14th of September. We do see rainfall return in a much uh, similar fashion to what we're expecting this weekend across northern Queensland. You can see a few showers expected to line the North Queensland coastline here and there. But the low pressure system we've been talking about that's been flashing on and off the forecast models the last couple of weeks, uh, it, it isn't there on this forecast run, but I would just like to say take the longer range forecast with a heavy pinch of salt. Between major forecast models, though, all are in agreement that there is some decent rainfall on the forecast up into northern Queensland. The GFS going ham with up to 200 millimetres, which for the GFS is some pretty big numbers at this time of the year. And the eastern earth a little bit more conservative, and I reckon we will be seeing 14-day rainfall accumulations around that 100 millimetre mark. So I'd say the eastern earth is the best forecast model to follow at this point in time but whilst we do expect rainfall this week we're not 100 percent sure next week if that makes sense so next week take the forecast with a heavy pinch of salt and now to the third week of september whilst we do expect rainfall it's not expected to be anything too significant and again this rainfall not enough to flood a drain pipe up into far north queensland that's going to do it for today. It's definitely been a detail packed with a forecast update. If you have enjoyed it and found it, found it informative, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. I'm more than happy to uh, listen to feedback as well. So if you've got any, please do let me know in the comment section down below as well. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on the screen right now. I hope everybody has a great Friday, a great weekend as well. We'll be returning with updates tomorrow first thing. That is going to be all for me today. I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.